Hey, everybody. Throwing a cocktail party is a surefire way to get people in the mood for the holidays. Sipping on some eggnog while enjoying some sweet treats. I mean, what could be more festive, right? But because the holiday get-togethers are looking a little different this year, Madewell has joined forces with Create and Cultivate to help spread cheer and spark some holiday joy this season. For the third and final episode of Madewell and Create and Cultivate's three-party cozy chat series, I'm really excited to be here with Martha Stewart to share some tips on hosting the perfect holiday cocktail party right at home. Whether you're safely gathering outdoors or cheering loved ones through Zooms, we've got you covered. Hey, Martha, how are you? I am great. And what about you? I am doing wonderful. Doing wonderful, all things considered. Guests. What was that? I'm sorry. Who were the first two guests in this series? You know what? I don't think I know who the first two guests were in the series. I was only worried about how you and I were going to do. <laughs> oh. oh, well, I'm very happy to be here. And this is my second appearance for Create and Cultivate. I think I did one in Brooklyn, didn't I? Yeah. Heather? Yeah. Heather has to remember for me because <laughs> I do so, I do a lot of stuff. And uh, I just, but Thanks. I had such a great time. We had, really yeah, we had so much fun. We had, uh, we had interviews with very famous models were all dolled up. And then we did an interview on the stage and in front and right in the street. Wasn't it right on the street in, in um, yeah, Industry, Indu City. Industry City? Yeah, it was great. Oh, that great. sounds great. I, I miss the days when we could do that kind of stuff. Yeah, I, I've done, a, I've done an appearance only, with- Only girls were there that day. <laughs> I did an appearance with them before as well, but unfortunately it happened right after COVID hit. So it was all switched to virtual, but it was still great. Mm -hmm. I hear though that you are going to show us how to make your famous eggnog today. Yes, Martha Stewart's eggnog is like none other. It's really, really, really good. Uh, we love it. Everybody uh, covets it and they <laughs> wait to be invited to my Christmas party to have it. Um, and it's best made like the day before, the base, the base of the eggnog with all the liquor in it should be made probably the day before. It's good. It's good right after you make it too, but it gets better. And um, it gets better with age. Yeah. We'll get take quarts of it home for my parties, and it along with all the cookies that they steal. Um, <laughs> last year we had a party for about three hundred people. We made two thousand cookies. I only know what? that because the because my little elves who baked the 2,000 cookies counted every single one of them. I think charged me for every single one, but they were <laughs> baked cookies of all sorts. You can see them in the um, 30th anniversary issue of Martha Stewart Living Magazine, which is on the stands right now. Nice. If you're lucky enough to be a subscriber, and you all should be a subscriber because it is the best lifestyle magazine, um, you will see my Christmas party from last year. Unfortunately, now, unfortunately it, no Christmas party this year. No. You know, if I came to your party, though, I would make sure that I tagged you in any pictures that I took, you know, unlike my cat's mate, Anthony, who so selfishly did not and, tag you. Yeah, and Tony, he came over. I came to the party as a guest of my agent at CAA, Ben Levine. And I didn't know who the heck he was, by the way. <laughs> I didn't. I really didn't. I really did not. And I was so embarrassed when I found out who he was. And he, he was friendly. He was nice. He was sort of like nosing around. And he did not. And then he posts my dogs and my house and my cookies and my gingerbread mansion, everything. And, and he never even put Martha Stewart 48 on it. That's my, that's my personal Instagram. So it kind of annoyed me. And <laughs> I let it be known. And oh, I, I love that you called him out on it. I thought it was great. I love calling people out on those things. Anyway, we have become close friends. He came to Maine this summer. They, they were saying, I, I can tell these stories, right? Because it's all, all family, right? They, he and Ben came uh, to my beautiful home in Maine and my grandchildren were there. And we went out to dinner the first night. We went to Bar Harbor to Stew Man's. It's a, it's a famous lobster joint. And even though it was COVID, we, were, we had our own table way out on the dock. And, and my little eight-year-old grandson, Truman, sparred with Anthony the entire dinner, sparred with him, and beat him with every remark. My, my, oh, that doesn't surprise me at all. No, why? Truman, Truman has an amazing adult vocabulary in English, Spanish, and Mandarin. <laughs> and wow. He, 
Yeah, he's really accomplished for, for an eight-year-old, but he knows so much about everything. And he just kept going at Anthony. The entire, they loved each other by the end of the evening. <laughs> and they respond by, by, I think they text each other. It's really cute. But I love a that. Guy, and you must have very much fun working with him on your show. He is, he is a sweetheart. We're all very, very lucky to be able to work with people that we actually like. Not everyone gets the, that pleasure. Okay. <laughs> oh, great. So, um, and I, I, I work with my, uh, with people on my show too. My new show, Martha Knows Best. Have you watched any mm -hmm. of it? I have, I have. I think it's very cute. It was a cute show. And, uh, and R uh, Ryan, who is my gardener, uh, is doing the camera work tonight. So if there's anything wrong, blame <laughs> Ryan. Blame me. <laughs> <laughs> You're going right oh, no. I, I'm sure Ryan will do great. Oh, now, I'm really excited though Ryan, to. I want you to see Ryan because he's in yeah. his garden. Look, he's in his gardening clothes. There he is. Doesn't he look cute? He's having here all, all night. He starts at seven in the morning, and he's <laughs> and he got the message yesterday too that California time was three hours earlier than New York time. It's fine. What was was this was this new <laughs> news to you, Ryan? That <laughs> California time was three hours early. Well, we didn't know. We had no idea that the five o'clock that we were we were booked for was eight o'clock because it was in California. We had no idea. Darn California. You know, I've lived out here for only five years. I was in New York for 14. And to me, the world still does revolve around New York time. My first, my first, my first um, Zoom was this morning at eight o'clock. So we've been going, it's now 8.15, 12 oh, hours wow. later. I am she still works hard. Running. I don't know how, but that's why I'm drinking my first cocktail, which is, I told you, I think, Imperial Vodka. Is this is this your first or your first of many? No, no, no. I first. <laughs> one, uh, because this is a very rare vodka. The Imperial Vodka is, is made in St. Petersburg. Oh, wow. And, um, I did a story. I went to I went to St. Petersburg to film the making of vodka for my for my daily show. And uh, it was quite an extraordinary um, uh, event because going to St. Petersburg in a private jet by one of those owned by the oligarch who owns the standard vodka. Uh, it was really <laughs> great. bowls of caviar and, and parties at, at the Catherine the Great's palace. You know, it was a great time. Those were the good old days. COVID. I, I can see why you and Anthony get along so well. Yeah, COVID and I <laughs> COVID it all. No more travel, no more this, no more that. So we have to make do. And so we're going to make do with eggnog. And it's I love it. That's My favorite thing. holiday drink. So what, what do I need to make your famous eggnog? Okay, well, I hope you have eight eggs. Are you making it along with I do. You? Yes, I'm going to make it along with you. Okay, so eight eggs. Separate, okay. I separate the yolks into one bowl and the egg whites into your bowl of your mixer. Okay? Okay. And then beat your, with a whisk, beat your egg yolks nicely with a whisk and incorporate the sugar. And you're going to add three quarters of a cup of super fine sugar to your egg yolks. Now this is very important to get it really, really kind of creamy, the egg yolks and sugar. You can do this in the mixer too if you have two bowls, which we do not have. So, and it makes a lot of noise, the, the mixer. We probably should be doing these in the kitchen. So uh, if I turn this on, they're not gonna hear me. But let me just, let me just see. Can you hear me anyway? Yeah, yeah, I can still hear you. Oh, you can, okay. So this yeah. needs to beat also with a scant half cup of sugar. And they, they're gonna be in, so the beautiful egg yolks are getting creamy. You want that super fine sugar to completely dissolve into a creamy egg yolk mixture. And then that's done. You add two cups of heavy cream. Okay. Heavy cream. Heavy cream. Yeah. And get, no. I always buy organic cream, organic milk. Um, Good. I you know, I, I would think that you would have your own milk cow. I, I the one thing I'm missing on this farm are my milk cows. And uh, I am, I have one spot where I can build a dairy barn. Uh-huh. In, in the winter though, because I, you know, dairy cows, if they're not eating grass all the time, and it's not, the milk's not as good. True, very true. I grew up in Dairyland, USA, in Missouri, drinking drinking milk from the cows every morning. I know how to milk cows. 
That's, it's fun until they kick you. <laughs> and then into this, you add, oh my gosh, this is the fun part. Now, my eggnog is quite flavorful. A half a cup of your favorite vodka, I mean, favorite bourbon, excuse me. This is okay. Richter's bourbon, and I'm going to add a half a cup of Richter's. I'm saying, Rick, see, I had one vodka. Nectar's. Oh, correct me. Don't let me say I'm already drunk on one vodka. <laughs> what? <laughs> Only a half a cup? Yes, but that's great. I'm up a little if, more than that. If you're going to be using, like, for 300 people, you do this many times, you probably, it probably okay. gets faster maybe at least 10 times. Then the best rum you have, a quarter of a cup of the best rum. Okay, half a cup. Oh, I have a couple of the best rum. And oh. This is oh, I put my rum in first. Marquiron, Marquiron. It is very special. It's state strength. Mm. It's a very complicated label. And then Remy Martin, BSOP, Cognac, Brandy, a quarter of a cup of that. So okay. Three different liqueurs. This is why. You plan on one cup of eggnog per guest. Hmm. That's it. only one cup. It's more like a half a cup. See the size of these little cups? That they Those start, are cute. With that, and then they can have a second. Some people actually have a third, but with all the heavy cream and the egg, I mean, it's a it's a very very fabulous, fattening, delicious. Cup. It looks like it. <clears throat> So I was going to ask you if you still plan on decorating your house, even though you're not having a party, but I can see behind you that you already have. Is the whole house already decked out for Christmas? Please, the deck and the dazzle. And all <laughs> my windows in the kitchen and my big dining room are all, they have these beautiful uh, Martha Reeds that uh, we sell at Wayfair. You can go to Wayfair and get these beautiful pre-lit re uh, reeds made out of a kind of a tinsel material. And you can use them year after year after year. They take I love that. Batteries, but they are so pretty and they hang so nicely in the windows. And they look nice unlit or lit. So nice. Okay, so this is getting nice and fluffy, the egg whites. And we have whipped cream. One cup of whipped heavy cream. And you're going to then, I'll show you, uh, top this off with nutmeg. And, uh, but I want to put this beautiful eggnog in this beautiful bowl. My housekeeper of 37 years. How long? My housekeeper of 37 years. Wow. It's called Laura Acuna. And uh, she retired last year. You can imagine how I felt because Laura Acuna knows where everything is in all my homes. She also really appreciated antiques and collectibles and vintage, and um, and she made sure nothing ever got broken. I don't think Laura in 37 years ever broke anything. Wow. And uh, I can't say that for everybody who works here. No. <laughs> they're not, you know, I think. I think now people are afraid. There's a there's a rule when you come to work for me that if you break something, you have to put it on the table with a note and all the pieces. And I bet, I bet they don't do that anymore. <laughs> well, of course they don't. <laughs> you think of course they don't? <laughs> I, I, I have a feeling they don't. I also have a feeling that I didn't hear some of the steps because I don't think mine's coming out like yours, but. Why not? I don't know. I, I don't think I whipped my, I, didn't, I definitely didn't whip my cream properly because I, I didn't okay. hear that part. And wait, it's so beautiful and fluffy. Yeah, mine, mine didn't have, that didn't happen with mine. Should I have put cream in the egg whites? No. No, just egg whites? Yes, egg whites and sugar. Maybe, maybe it's, oh, with the sugar, that's the thing I didn't hear. <laughs> you need Ashley to help you with the food part. <laughs> uh-huh. He made, he is... can I tell you a secret? He made what? 
scrambled eggs for the children because they found out that he was a cook. He's a really, he does a really good scramble. Well, he put water in. Yes. Well, the children, that's anathema to children. Water in homegrown eggs? It didn't come out good? No, they were terrible. On, a, on one to 10, I think they gave him a two. <laughs> I, I only say I assume they were good because he has talked about his eggs with water in them over and over and over about how fluffy and moist it makes them. They did not go for those eggs. <laughs> I am going to have to call him out on that. That's like him putting sour cream in his um, guacamole. I know, he put sour cream in his guacamole for heaven's sake. Or no, not sour. No, 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 no. He puts Greek yogurt in his oh, in his um, guacamole. First, Greek yogurt. Oh. <laughs> sour yogurt. You get the sourness from the wines. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Now we're going to put into this bowl that has the cream and the egg whites. We are now going to put the beautiful liquid of cream and egg yolks and heavy cream, heavy cream and milk. I'm just going to watch at this point because my blender is too loud for this and my cream is definitely not whipped. What are you doing in a blender? Uh, no, it's just this little hand mixer, but it's too oh, loud. That's not a blender, that's a mixer. Yeah. I can't hear you when I use it, so I'm just going to watch now. Okay. So here, take that. So here is our gorgeous, gorgeous, fluffy. How many, how many servings does that make? Um, I would say this makes about oh, maybe 15. Nice. Uh, two. 15. <laughs> so there, there's our eggnog. And then now you have to put nutmeg on the top. You must, that looks beautiful. You must uh, end with, with beautifully freshly grated nutmeg. Now, you know what nutmegs are, right? I don't think I do, actually. Where do they come from? I, I don't know. You tell me. I'm from a little nut like this. This one's already been peeled once. The outer coating of this nutmeg was broken off. It's a hard mm -hmm. shell. And underneath is this web. Can you see this web? Oh, wow. Of orangey kind of filigree. Yeah, yeah. That is mace. Not the mace. That's mace? That, and not the stuff you shoot in people's face. That's just, <laughs> This is a spice. And you take the spice off, and then you're left with a nut, and you can hear something shaking in it. Can you hear? Yeah. yeah. Now, in that drawer right there, can you can you get the big mallet out? It's right, right in that first drawer. No, 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 no. Here in the table. There's a black mallet in there. Yes. <laughs> now you have to hit this one, and inside is the second spice, a nutmeg. So it's the, as far as I know, and it's probably true, that's the only spice in the world is actually two spices on one thing. In one it's like a wooden Russian doll. Every time you open up another layer, you get something more exciting inside. Yes, that's a very good analogy here. That can go back into that drawer. We always try to put everything back exactly where it comes from because there's so many drawers and so many things that you would go nuts if you mixed up the drawers. So then, <laughs> And you know what this is, right? Um, that is called a group shaver or a, I don't know the terminology. <laughs> it's a grater. It's a grater. I grater. It. That's it. I'm like, school me, Martha. School me. Great grater, but it really is not just a grater. It was a wood rasp for the carpenters. Oh. So if you wanted to round a corner or smooth a piece of wood, you would use this. And then somebody decided, wow, that's a great grater also. So now we use the wood rasp as the grater. I love it. Grater. And it grates nutmeg perfectly because it's very fine. Once I made these for Kmart, and they, it's, the sharp is down. You have to go down to get the grating. The mm -hmm. manufacturer made a mistake on 300,000 of these and put the handle on the wrong end. So it was on this end. So try to grate backwards on this. It doesn't work. So <laughs> 300,000 of these things at Kmart. Hey, I mean, with you behind it, that's just the new way, that's the new way it's done. That's the new norm. Everyone else's is wrong. Should have had to go backwards on it. And it's so inconvenient. So, 
If any of you out there have had one of those original backwards great graders, send it back to Kmart, which is now defunct, I think, and uh, they get their money back. <laughs> hey, it's a collector's item now. It's, it's unique it's, and special. The cute little cuffs that come with this and this little set that, that uh, Laura Acuna sent to me. So you put your eggnog very nicely into your cup and you take a sip. Now you can't even take a sip because you didn't make it. No, no, because I didn't do it because it would be too loud. Well, that's not nice. What's that? You're breaking up. That's not nice. You were supposed to make it with me. I couldn't hear you. I'm sorry, Martha. You know what? Next time you have me over at some point, I'll make it with you then. Okay. I felt it better for everyone to hear you than for me to make it in person. Very considerate. And this is really good at knock. Oh. And it looks delicious. That cream looks beautifully whipped. Better tomorrow, but is that a beautiful bowl of eggnog? Can you see that? I can't see. That's that. gorgeous. The cream looks amazing. Yeah, so good. Oh. Now I'm mixing. Um, I'm mixing bourbon, rum, and cognac with vodka. So if I make <laughs> this program, you will be very lucky. <laughs> well, Martha, that looks. Absolutely delicious. And I'm definitely going to make it again myself once I'm not on camera and it's too loud oh, to drown you out. Look, oh, look. that looks beautiful. It is. It is beautiful. It is so amazing. And it really is tasty. So this should go over here. Can somebody grab this and take that off to my tray? <laughs> oh, you know, I'll just, I'll sip some whiskey with you. So that way I'm, I'm sipping something as well. Wait, wait till you see who's coming over here. Come here. It's for your reader. Oh. This is my, who's my this? precious. Oh, Empress Tang. Say hi, Empress. Say hi. Oh, he's beautiful. She, she's an empress. She? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. All I hear, all I could hear was Tang. It, you broke up. <laughs> oh, empress Tang from the Tang Dynasty. She's beautiful. And her sister Peony will probably show up at some point, but she's the most beautiful pretty cat. Oh, she, I love cats. The lights come on and people like you start talking. She gets very curious and wants to know who's here. And she comes out and she hangs out. And usually they're they're kind of aloof, these cats, but she just loves the lights and the action, don't you, Tango? She she knows she knows she's a star. Oh, she does. oh that little face is so cute. So pretty in here. Oh. You're so, oh, you're dribbling. She's a little dribbling. <laughs> uh, she's, she's like, Mama, like, not on TV, not on camera. Come on, here. <laughs> All right. So I'm now gonna show you. How to um, make some quick twisted funny. candles. Yes. Oh yeah, you have this very fabulous way of, of sort of sort of reshaping regular old candles, don't you? Exactly. So a lot of times these regular tapers can get a little boring. So what I've done is I put them in hot water. Yeah. Um, and I've pre I pre-done that because they need to sit in the hot water for about 10 minutes. Um, what I have learned though is sometimes the water can be too hot. So don't boil the water because then when you put the candles in, they melt too much. Um, a good temperature is about 110 degrees. So I take them, um, usually you can get 110 degree water out of your tap, like mine's about 140. But again, if you boil the water, it's gonna make them too soft and they just kind of disintegrate the water. So what you do, put them in the water and then lay them out. You can either use a wine bottle, a vodka bottle, or a roller, and you just softly roll them. Now, when you first start to do a little bit of pressure, so that way you don't flatten them too much, and just kind of see how soft they are. And you don't hurt don't, the wick. You don't hurt exactly, the wick. you don't hurt the wick. And also though, don't go all the way to the bottom because you need to keep it round at the bottom so that it can fit in the taper. But just kind of flatten, flatten. Make sure it stays. Well, that is a taper, right? That's the taper. This is the taper, yeah. So then, as you can see, I've gotten it flat. So I just start twisting and twisting. Oh, wow. And twisting. I heard this is big on Instagram. <laughs> it is. This has been you all start, over Instagram. Did you start the trend? You know what? I don't know if I started it. I don't, I don't know. Who knows who started it originally? Well, I've been seeing it quite a bit. This to a candle. What's that? What would make you do this to a candle? 
I like adding texture. So mm -hmm. I don't like creating drama with a lot of different color or pattern. I like using texture. So I find that using a few in a different color, but creating this cool twisted texture creates some drama and uniqueness and makes them look like way more expensive candles than the dollar store candles that you can use to do this. And it just makes it look more refined, more chic, more fancy, more expensive. Oh, but lovely. it's not, yeah, what do you think? I, th I, well, first of all, I love your candlesticks. And Thank I, you. And I think those candles look amazing like that, really. Thank you. It's just a cute little way to add an extra something. It's a good thing, right? It's a very good thing. Yeah. Yeah. So you better, so, you better save those candles that are in the hot water. Look at them. They look sad. Oh, they're else? getting a little, getting a little droopy, aren't they? Here, I'll do some more for you. Anything else? Open this up. Okay. I'm sorry. Can you do anything else to them, or do they all have to be twisted like that? Um, do they all have to be twisted? No, they don't all have to be twisted. You can leave some straight or gay, whichever way you want. <laughs> um, but yeah, I like, if I'm going to put them all together, I actually like them to be all twisted because I do like them to be uniform. I'm a Virgo. I like things to be uniform. So if you buy, you can, you could, if you buy twisted candles, are they expensive, more expensive than the dollar store ones? Um, I would assume they're more expensive than dollar store ones. I've never actually bought the twisted ones myself. I always just make them. And then when you get done twisting them, the best thing to do is to dip them down in cold water. So that way they, they stop morphing and twisting right away. Okay. Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah. You just can um, stop, stop the, uh, you know, cool them down. Boy, exactly. Oh, the red one looks great. Yeah. And it's cool because when the, the wax then melts, it swirls down instead of just dripping off the side. Yeah, really. So that's that cute and simple. I won't keep going too long. I know we're at the end of our time and I don't want to keep everybody too late because I know it's late for you. Really? I, I, thought, I thought I had a lot of questions I had to ask you. <laughs> ask away, ask away. Gosh, you gave me a list of questions to ask you. Are you hosting a Zoom holiday party? You know what? I'm going to have um, my in-laws via Zoom um, my, I have two cousins that are coming over and I'm hosting just a little lunch out on our veranda. Um, but besides that, my family in Missouri will probably come on Zoom for a few minutes, but they live out in the middle of nowhere with barely any internet, so they won't be on for too long. I don't see, I don't see any holiday decorations behind you. You know what? Our living room is decorated. I'm honestly not a huge holiday decor person. The last 10 years, every holiday I've been traveling, working. I also owned my own retail stores for years in which I worked in my stores all through the holidays. So I was never really home to enjoy it. This is the first year we've actually put up a tree and I would say a decade. Are you binge watching anything good on TV other than your own program? I just watched um, Prom last night on Netflix. I don't know if you've seen that. That's a yeah. new movie. <laughs> it's so good with Meryl oh. Streep um, and James Corden. It's so good. Kerry Washington's in it. Um, Who's the other of Australian girl? Um, Nicole Kidman. It was oh. really, really good. Yeah. Uh, so um, very. Yeah. What's did that? Watch, yeah. Did you watch The Undoing? I did. I did. It was so good. Oh. It was so good. Nicole Kidman's amazing. At first, I just thought it was going to be a pretty little. Uh, was it? Was it Little Lies? Pretty, pretty Little Lies, the one on the West Coast. Lies. I just thought it was going to be an East Coast version of that, but no, she yeah. did amazing. That was a really good one. What's your favorite show right now? Oh, well, I love The Queen's Gambit, of course. It was so good. It was. It was so good. And I thought The Undoing was good. I loved Hugh Grant. I thought he's, he's, he's now become the actor I always thought he would be. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I love The Queen's Gambit has actually, um, they have shown that it has increased Google searches for chess and how to play chess by 75%. No chess sets to be found anywhere. What's and that? No chess sets are found anywhere. I know. It's Just... all sold out. It's so great because that's a good thinking game. Strategy Absolutely. and thought and, and uh, it's really good. And um, so I thought, I thought, yeah, TV is, I think, heavens for TV. Thank heavens for the internet, right? What oh, if, absolutely. What if our dear friends Steve Jobs and Bill Gates and 
the rest of them didn't make the internet for us so easy to use, right? We would be quite lonely right now, I'd say. Zoom, Zoom is, I mean, isn't it nice that there is a Zoom that is so easy to use? It's nice that we can still keep in contact with each other, even, even during a pandemic like this. Yep, Alexander Graham Bell was okay, but these guys took him, took him to, <laughs> to task. Hey, but you know what? Without, without his inventions, their inventions wouldn't be possible. Just like, sure. you know, if you think about the fact that the, the, without the invention of the wheel, what, 10,000 years ago, and without the invention of smelting iron, you know, 100,000 years ago, however long it was, we wouldn't have cars, you know? We wouldn't have big high rises. So one man's Tesla. invention cultivates another. Don't you have a Tesla? Uh, we do, we do. How'd you know that? <laughs> I'm just guessing because anybody who's, who cares about the environment wants an electric car of some sort. Yeah, right? my husband and I both have a Tesla. That's yeah, we've, um, we've had his since like 2015 and we just got mine this last year. Yeah, I, I won't drive a gas powered car anymore. That's so great. Where do you live? I live in Los Angeles, um, right on Lake Hollywood. So the front of our house overlooks all of Griffith Park, the Hollywood mm -hmm. sign, the observatory, um, mm -hmm. and then the back side of our house is the entire valley. So it's mm -hmm. it's a beautiful old mid-century right up in the hills. Oh, good. Well, it looks it looks beautiful. Someday I'll come for a tour. I and would love that. Thank you very much for spending some time with me. Of course. And, thank you uh, for having me, love. These recipes and um, and more ideas for for or in my magazine. This is the 30th anniversary of our magazine. That's crazy. Congratulations, Martha. Yeah. And uh, I just finished my Christmas card. And I'll show you what my Christmas card is going to have on it. I, have you sent out your Christmas cards? Do you? I haven't. I haven't. I, I'm not a Christmas card person. I love sending a digital one, but I yeah, haven't sent out is, real mine, ones. In mine is a digital card, but it, it, oh, it good. moves. And I put in all the different versions of my gingerbread village that we made last year. Where's my gingerbread village? Here it is, here it is. It's coming up someplace. Oh, here it is. We made this beautiful gingerbread village last year. Can you see that? That is amazing. Yeah. See, that that type of holiday stuff is right up my alley. I love doing things like building little villages like that. It incorporates architecture, crafts, yep. um, baking skills, decorating skills ingenuity, lighting, electricity. <laughs> yep, that's right up my alley. Yeah, if you can put a, a building aspect, an engineering aspect into baking, you'll have me in the kitchen for hours. Oh, that's so great. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you for um, allowing me to participate in Create and Cultivate. And, um, and it's uh, been a pleasure. Of course, Mwah. see you soon, Martha. Happy holidays. Oh, and don't, I don't want to forget, Bob is made well. And Madewell has sponsored all of this. And I love my beautiful flannel shirt. Me too. I love my earrings. Look, these cute little movable gold um, gold discs. I think they're beautiful. There's a lot of good stuff at Madewell. Absolutely. Awesome. All right, love. Mwah. Have a great evening. Get some sleep tonight. Thank Bye. you. Bye.